In this video, we are going to talk about how atoms become ions. First, you should have a good understanding of what an atom consists of, how to figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons an atom has. And you may recall that in an atom, in a neutral atom, the number of protons, or positively charged particles, equals the number of electrons, or negatively charged particles. So if an atom has five protons, five positive particles, it will also have five electrons, five negative particles. However, in chemical reactions, atoms can gain or lose electrons. What about protons and neutrons? Well, an atom can technically gain protons and neutrons as well, but these things don't happen in chemical reactions. They happen in nuclear reactions. So we're just going to focus on what might happen in a chemical reaction. Atoms can gain or lose electrons. So if an atom gains electrons, it will become negatively charged because electrons are negative. And if an atom loses electrons, it will become positively charged because it's losing something that's negative. When an atom gains or loses electrons, it becomes a charged particle. And it's not technically called an atom anymore. It's called an ion. So an atom is technically a neutral particle. And an ion is a charged particle. And this charged particle exists now because that atom has either gained or lost electrons. So how do we represent this newly charged particle? Well, you know how you represent an atom of an element. You write the element symbol. And you also might remember how to record the quantity of that element by um, writing a number and a little subscript after the element symbol. For example, uh, H2O has a subscript 2 after the H, after the hydrogen. And that would indicate how many hydrogens are in that molecule. So the, the lower right subscript indicates the number of atoms in that molecule. When we write a superscript after the element, that superscript will indicate the charge of the particle. And these charges take place usually in whole number integers. So we have a positive 1 or positive 2 or negative 1 or negative 2. And that number would indicate how many electrons have either been gained or lost and the resulting charge of that um, of that gain or loss of electrons. I know that's a little, that might sound a little confusing, but uh, the overall charge of the ion. So for example, if um, a, an atom has five protons and five electrons and it has lost uh, two electrons, now it has a positive two charge. So we would write that charge and we would write that as two plus. Um, if an atom gains an electron, we would write that charge as 1 minus because it has gained one electron, which has a negative charge. So this is where we put, the superscript is where we put the charge of the ion after it has either gained or lost its electrons. So this is the new charge of that particle um, in, that sub, in that superscript. So let's take a look at um, some ions. We have a, a particle here, um, an atom here, that has six protons and six neutrons and six electrons. And you can count all the little pieces if you want. Um, but this is a carbon atom. And I know it's an atom because it has equal numbers of protons and electrons. This is a neutral atom. And let's write out the whole, um, the whole element symbol and everything. Um, we have carbon here with... Um, and this is carbon-12, and if you don't understand that isotopic notation, don't worry about it. It's not the topic of this lesson. But this is carbon-12, and it has six protons because all carbon atoms have six protons. It has six neutrons because this specific atom of carbon has six neutrons. And this uh, carbon atom also has six electrons. So it has equal number of protons and electrons. And that's why we're going to call this a carbon atom because it has equal numbers of protons and electrons, equal positive and negative. So this is neutral. Now the second um, particle here has five protons, it has six neutrons, and it has six electrons. This would be boron because all boron atoms have five 
uh, proton. So this is boron. And this is going to be boron 11 because it has a total of five protons plus six neutrons. It has 11 particles in the nucleus. So this is boron 11. Now look, it has six electrons. So this has one extra electron than it does protons. So it has six negative charges and five positive charges. So let's look at these positive charges and these negative charges, how they stack up. It has one extra negatively charged particle in that atom. So now it's not called an atom anymore. It's called an ion and it has a negative one charge and you just have to write the negative symbol. Um, you can write one negative as well, but it's not as commonly used as just writing the negative if there's only one. Um, we assume that if it doesn't have the number, if it just has a negative, then it's only one negative. Um, so we would more commonly write B with a negative after it in superscript. Now this is an ion, and this ion has a negative charge. So it has a special name, and that special name is an anion. So a negatively charged ion is called an anion, and it got to be negative because somewhere along the line it had gained one electron. It had gone from neutral to gaining one electron. Let's take a look at this last example. We have a, a particle with six protons. So we know this is carbon because all carbon atoms have six protons. That's what identifies carbon as carbon has six protons. And this happens to be carbon 12 because it has six protons and six neutrons. There are 12 particles in the nucleus. But this carbon atom has only five electrons. So let's take a look at how this stacks up. We have five, or we have six protons, so six positives, and five negatives. So I'm gonna line up the positives and the negatives, and you'll notice there is one extra positive particle in this uh, substance, in this particle. So we have carbon with a positive charge. Now it's not carbon atom anymore. This is carbon ion. Now this ion doesn't really exist or rarely exists, but it's C plus. So C with a positive one charge, and we usually leave the one out if it's just uh, a positive one. So it's just C plus. Now this is an ion, and a positively charged ion also has a special name called a cation. So anytime you see the word cation, your mind should automatically uh, think that this is a positively charged ion. So we have a neutral atom first, a negative ion or an anion second, and a positively charged ion or a cation is that third particle. So what happened to that uh, uh, atom to become negatively charged? Well, it had gained electrons. So anytime you see a negatively charged ion, know that it is because it had gained electrons. It has gained something that was negative, so it has gained electrons. And anytime you see a positively charged ion, you should know that it has become positive because it has lost electrons. It lost something negative. Let's take a look at a couple practice examples. How many protons and electrons are present in each of the following ions? So we have magnesium with a positive two charge. Now all magnesium atoms have 12 protons. No matter what, if it's magnesium, it has 12 protons. But how many electrons does this magnesium ion have? Because we know it's charged, so we know that it has a positive two charge. It has 12 protons. We can't ever change the number of protons. But the number of electrons is going to be different. It's actually going to have two less electrons than protons, which is why it has that positive two charge. So 12 protons and 10 electrons in this magnesium ion. Let's take a look at this nitrogen ion. Um, the number of protons, every nitrogen atom has the same, and ion for that matter, has the same number of protons. So if you look at nitrogen on the periodic table, it's gonna be atomic number seven, which would indicate it has seven protons. Now, how many electrons does this have? Well, this nitrogen ion has Three, has a negative three charge, or three minus a negative three charge, so that means it has three more negative particles than positive particles. So this one would have a, uh, a 10 electrons and seven 
protons. It always has the same number of protons. And all nitrogen particles have the same number of protons. But this one, this ion of nitrogen, has 10 electrons. So you should have a good understanding now of what makes a particle an ion and how to figure out the number of protons and electrons in a given ion.